you doing? Good to see you. It's good to be here. My name's Jason, and I'm going to talk to you about empathy, a little thing called empathy. I think it's nice to kind of get to know somebody before you listen to them for a while. This is my family. Um, I've got two awesome kids, Henry, who's four, Eloise, who's two, and my wife, Molly, and I have been married since 2007. We live in Holland, um, and I truly love being a part of the community of West Michigan. I have a soft spot in my heart for TEDx and the kind of conversations that happen here. I think it's just a really cool environment. So I'm excited to be with you today. So uh, one of the, the guys in one of our classes, our innovation management class at New North, said, has empathy jumped the shark? Because it seems like you pull open every HBR or Fast Company and somebody's talking about empathy and getting to know your users and human-centered design and design thinking, this, that, and the other thing. And um, I think that there's probably some truth in that. Um, it's a conversation that seems to be growing, and a lot of people have a little bit of a disagreement around what it means, but if it's really jumped the shark, my question is, uh, it might have, but why then? Why in the world are there so many bad experiences? Why are our interactions day after day filled with rough experiences? Like, here's an example. So, TSA. I am grateful that these guys and gals protect us. I really am, and I know it's a tough job. But when in the, the last time that you heard somebody get off of a, a trip and go, yeah, you know, I had a really great time with airport security. I didn't feel violated. I didn't feel rushed. I got my bag when I wanted it to. I had enough time to put my belt back on. It's just an experience that doesn't really seem to be designed for anybody. It, it just happens. It's not designed for me as a passenger, and I don't think it's really designed for these folks that are trying to keep us safe. Here's another one. Anybody try to buy a car recently? I'm in the process of trying to do this. I would love to have just a little conversation with whoever came up with the customer relationship management software that car dealers use. I think it works probably really great for the dealer. It's terrible as a buyer. It's like they didn't even care what I was going through. Here's another one. Checkout lanes. Bad, right? Coming into Christmas, this is a rough time. Uh, we're going to be waiting. You can't control all of it. It's going to happen. But are there some ways that we can make this a little bit better? Maybe for the cashiers, maybe for those of us that are purchasing. What about this great stock photo? Uh, anybody been in a meeting like this where you just, everybody is super happy and you feel like you've got <laughs> purpose and you know why you're in the room? And there's a lot of bad meetings, right? That's, that's something where it just doesn't seem like it's paying attention to anybody's feelings around the table. And this is the awe factor, right? So this is Henry. A couple years ago, I spent a night at uh, Helen DeVos Children's Hospital. We actually had a really great experience there. But I'll tell you, in the last uh, 12, uh, probably 12 weeks, I've heard probably one conversation a week, at least, of really bad healthcare experiences. It's a system that's super complex, and it doesn't seem like it's designed for anybody, from the nursing staff to the doctor to the patient or the caregiver. It's just rough, right? So let's do a little level set. Here's... What's sympathy? Sympathy is when we feel sorry for somebody. I just feel sorry for you. I'm sorry that you had to go through airport security. Compassion, though, is when I feel sorry because you suffered. I'm sorry you had a really bad experience in airport security. Um, and I'm sorry that you have some sort of misfortune. The problem with sympathy and with compassion is there are really dangerous places to design from. We make bad decisions when we feel sorry for people, when we pay attention to suffering. We think about what we would want there, not what the person actually might need. So that brings us to empathy. And people call this walking in somebody else's shoes, call it whatever you want, but this is trying to make the step of getting into somebody else's point of view and seeing the world through their eyes, whatever that experience might be. So here's my early attempt at empathy. Uh, if, you, <laughs> uh, if you're a dad, you may have done this. I did this in the basement of Holland Hospital where you wear the sandbag thing for like five minutes and I'm supposed to totally understand what it's like to be a pregnant woman for nine months. And man, did it work. I understood what my wife was going through. Not at all. But it did give me just a little window into her world, just for a moment, why it was hard to get in and out of the car, why it was maybe she was winded going up and down the stairs. I had a, just a little window in. So, supposedly 98% of us, so just about everybody in this room, is capable of feeling empathy. So why don't we do it? So Henry David Thoreau said this, could a greater miracle take place than for us to look through each other's eyes for an instant? Now, I think there's probably some greater miracles that might be able to happen, but I love the sentiment of this, that 
if we just took a moment to look at it, if I just stop for a minute and put myself in your shoes watching me, how could I communicate to you a little bit differently? That might be more effective so you hear what I have to say. So what's stopping us? 98% of us can do this. Why is this so hard? I think it comes down to this. I think we're really nice. And you've heard this term probably, West Michigan nice. I'm from Chicago, and I came up here to go to Hope, and I've lived here just about ever since. And uh, we're really good at uh, being nice on the surface level. I walked down 8th Street in Holland. Hey, how you doing? Good. See you later. And I'm having a terrible day. But I said good. And so did the other person. And we just kind of motor past it. The problem with West Michigan nice is I think it robs us of the context around somebody. And we trick ourselves into feeling good. I checked in with my buddy. He said he was good. I said I was good. Even though I'm not, we're good. Everything's fine. We forget about the actual conversation behind that. So why do we even care? Why is empathy a big deal? You might be sitting here going, I'm working with a business or an organization. Why is this a big deal? Well, it drives experience. Experience is everything. Experience drives commerce. If you think about the companies that we choose to spend a lot of money with, companies like an Apple, for example, because it wouldn't be a talk about experience and empathy if we didn't mention Apple, but uh, if you think about companies that seem to have experience nailed, they're the ones that are doing really well right now. We think about connection. The experience that we have here, this well-designed, well-thought-through TEDx model is designed so that you have great conversations and good connections. And I think when you have great experiences and good connections, you develop good communities, really strong communities, communities that embrace experience as a whole. So it's not a checkbox. It's not 100%. And quite frankly, I think it's actually a little hard to do. But John Colquell says this. I love this quote. Complete empathy is impossible. I will never know what it's like to be in your shoes. But it's a pursuit of empathy that's not impossible, and that's what we can learn. That's what we can teach. That's where we can grow. Um, and you think about it like this. We're on one side of the spectrum. Your user, whoever that is, is on the other side. And you're just trying to make that gap a little bit smaller. And the closer that you can get to your user, whoever that is, the more likely you are to build a product or design a service or create an experience or have a good interaction with your family that they will find usable, useful, desirable. And it's actually something you can do again. So it's the effort that counts. You're never going to get to 100%. But taking the effort is really what matters here. And I think humility is a big part of this as well. Intentionality. You've got to disconnect from who you are and what you think the other person needs and take a minute to get inside their shoes and to think about it. And you have to be intentional about it. It takes time. So empathy brings this human dimension. It's the H in HCD. It's the human in human-centered design. Uh, and I think this is applicable whether your brand is a school, whether it's a business, whether it's a church, it's your family, it's some sort of random interaction. The days that I think about what my wife might be going through when I come home from work, what might have happened just before I walked in the door, help me be a better parent and a better husband when I walk in the door. The days that I don't and I just assume everything's fine, not, not the best days when I transition home, right? So I think it can be boiled down to this. We use, in our practice, uh, journey mapping. It's nothing that we've created. It's just kind of a, an easy way to do it. And I think if you look at three steps before and three steps after a key interaction, so you put that interaction in the middle, you put that TSA walking through the x-ray scanner, grabbing your bag off the little conveyor belt. You think about coming home at the end of a long day. You think about uh, a church experience on a Sunday morning. You think about your user and you put them in the middle and you do this like a little storyboard. You stick them right there. Think about the things that happen right after that. And think about the things that happen right before that. And realize that maybe you don't actually know what happens right before and you need to have some conversations to learn about that. Or you think about the things that happen right afterwards and you want to leave them at a great spot. They're coming up. You want their energy level to be high. How might you do that? And I don't think these are really big gaps all the time. I think there's some small tweaks. Again, empathy is not 100%. It's okay to take a step forward. Some small things can make a huge difference. So my question for us today, again, why are interactions full of bad experiences? Why don't we take the time to just have a conversation, take the time to do a little design research, take the time to get to know the people in our system. We're all part of complex systems whether it's healthcare, whether it's education, whether it's a business, whether it's a family. Families are pretty complex sometimes. And taking the time to understand the people around us might help us design an experience that's more valuable, 
that's more profitable, that's more fun, quite frankly, and it's something that we want to do again and again and again. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great day at TEDx.